And then uh, finally, um, I wanted to basically review the expected returns for US equities. Um, I think uh, that chart raised, well, it, it generated a few emails. And, you know, if I get a couple of emails, it means that there's probably um, quite a few more people that are sitting there thinking the same question, but uh, not asking it. So basically, um, the the point of question there is that US equities uh, expected return, which is deeply negative. Now I would say that, well, first of all, this is real return. So we have um, got, uh, I think about just under 2% um, added, you know, dogpiled onto that in terms of uh, taking off the infl expected inflation. But um, basically, the, well, I'll start off with the mechanics of that. It's, it's mostly quantitative. And uh, the main reason that it's so negative is uh, the expectation of mean reversion, valuation mean reversion. So for that, using the blended PE, which is equal added average of these three over here. So PE 10, forward PE, trailing PE. And you can see there, so I've taken the Z score to kind of give them a comparison there. It's uh, quite common that in this type of, uh, you know, when you're in a earnings shock, that uh, the trailing and forward might be a bit overstated. So for, for instance, in 2009, or at the end of 2009, 2010 there, um, you know, if you were looking at the trailing PE, you might have thought, oh, the market looks expensive, but if you look at the PE 10, it actually looks, still looked quite cheap. Um, at the moment though, uh, you know, even if we say that the trailing PE is overstated, which it probably is, uh, the PE 10 is, not cheap by any means, and the PE10 is basically designed to, to, to cope with uh, the exact kind of scenario that we're in at the moment. So um, as I'll show in a second, um, you know, it might make sense to exclude the trailing PE from that, which I have run the calculation. The other thing is dividend yield. So dividend yield, as price has gone up, um, dividend yield has come down a lot. Um, so that, you know, it's a uh, Still about a percentage point, um, well, certainly relative to where it was, but um, relative to the average, it's come down about a percentage point. Um, another, yeah, which I'll reflect and I don't think I did reflect that initially, but um, the other thing on this chart worth noting is that if you look at the dividend yield post, uh, post 90s, it's a lot lower, but um, and I don't show it here, but if you looked at the buyback yield, it's almost as much as the dividend yield. So it brings it uh, kind of a bit higher there. So I've had factored that in as well. The nominal growth assumptions, um, <clears throat> they're basically, I, I haven't changed them recently. So, and, and you know, I don't think that they're kind of out of line with history. So it's, yeah, it's not really having any impact on it. Um, so then, yeah, we come to that chart at the end here. And basically what I've done is a few different uh, types of adjustments. <clears throat> so the first one here is what it would look like if we excluded the trailing P from the, the mean reversion calculation. And we can see there that that does uh, improve it a bit. Um, and then if we added a buyback yield there, um, basically assuming it to be roughly what it's averaged over the last four years. Uh, that, that would also improve it quite significantly. And then if we look at both adjustments, that would bring us uh, back down to, uh, well, up to uh, only minus 3%. Then the other thing is, uh, you know, what if a five-year valuation mean reversion is uh, too aggressive? What about if we use a longer term mean reversion period, so seven years? Uh, well, first of all, that, that first black bar there is um, the original, but uh, with a seven-year mean reversion. And then that final uh, much uh, improved bar there, or much smaller negative, is um, if you have the seven-year mean reversion, add back the buyback yield and exclude the trailing PE. And so, I mean, it, it almost gets you to 0%, but it's basically still slightly negative. Um, and then if we go back to that chart there, sort of comparing it across the landscape, it's uh, still gonna be marginally lower than treasuries and definitely lower versus um, 
EFI, Emerging Frontier Commodities. And actually, if you um, roll out some of the, or at least, yeah, if you roll out some of those other adjustments to these, to the rest of equities, that they would actually go a bit higher again. So I think, um, you know, we can definitely perhaps uh, agree that that maybe, you know, too, uh, too bearish um, and that, you know, if you made those adjustments, then it would be a bit uh, less worse. But the, um, the conclusion that global looks better than US, commodities look better than equities, um, that the prospective equity risk premium is uh, negative, those, uh, those conclusions still stand. So um, a useful exercise, I think, to also just understand what, what kind of goes into these and some of the sensitivities, but um, still fairly similar conclusions.